the No Fade channel, checking in. Today, I want to talk about the closing of the Warhouse Gym in Reading, Pennsylvania. It's a big, famous gym on the East Coast, owned and operated, or was, by Dana Lynn Bailey and Rob Bailey. I did a previous video, and since then, new information has come to light, and I think it warrants a whole new video because it opens up, or it should open up, a lot of people's eyes. I also want to talk about the hate and animosity, or at least apparent hate and animosity that I got in the comments towards uh, Rob and especially Dana Lynn Bailey. And last but not least, I really want to have an open discussion about the perception of business owners here in the United States. And if this is your first time to the channel, go ahead, hit that subscribe button down below. Uh, this channel, in short, is just something that I put together. I make videos that I want to see. So oftentimes it'll be health, fitness related, family related and then from time to time we have these type of informational discussions because i think having an open dialogue helps just push forward accurate information and give people a better perception of what's going on so in the last video i did a whole video on the warhouse gym um, that are owned and operated by dana lynn bailey and wow the comments were very polarizing people were pro you know pro Dana Lynn Bailey and Rob Bailey and people were just against them and some people had some serious hatred in their heart uh, in those comments. So um, I want to give a brief overview of those two because I think so many people only see how how well they're doing now and don't know their back history. And I'm going to give a very brief overview that's really only going to touch upon it, but hopefully it covers the main parts that I think are prevalent to this conversation. So Rob and Dana Lynn Bailey started off as high school sweethearts. Dana Lynn Bailey, before becoming the famous fitness icon that we know her to be today, was actually an elementary school teacher, and Rob Bailey was a personal chef, okay? Rob Bailey started his business in his garage doing t-shirt sales for Flag Nor Fail uh, clothing line, for those who aren't familiar with the term it's an old like english nautical term flag nor fail i'll put the meaning like right up here um, and you guys can look it up and keep, keep me honest here and then over time the clothing line grew and dana lynn bailey who was always into athletics transitioned into the fitness realm and she probably became most well known initially as a fitness model i for myself know and remember distinctly she had a very famous um very famous commercial on uh, like the, the magazines, like the, the muscle and fitness magazines back when people read magazines. I think it was uh, Gaspari Labs and she was like, she had a chain around her neck and she had like, she had like a chain around her neck, a really, really famous photo that was in like every magazine. You couldn't open up a magazine without seeing it. If I can find it, I will put that up here. Um, again, this, this is how they started. So, and how did Rob start his flag nor fail clothing line in his own garage? He didn't start it with a with a donation or a loan. He started it on uh, credit card debt, essentially. He just got a bunch of credit cards, ran up, racked up the debt, believed in himself, and worked out of his own garage and built the Flag Nor Fail empire to what it is today. Now, going forward, Dana Lynn Bailey then did a number or at least a few fitness competitions, for lack of a better term. I don't think they were necessarily fitness. People are going to kill me who are really in the bodybuilding uh, landscape but she won one of the more prestigious ones that had that that occurred and th then she basically skyrocketed in popularity with Rob's die-hard worth ethic and Dana Lynn Bailey's success as a fitness model and in the fitness competition landscape they rose to even bigger success in terms of sales of their flag nor fail products. Um, I can remember just through social media, their conventions, when they went to those bodybuilding conventions, the lines were super, super long. Now, to their credit, from all the videos that I've seen and from people just discussing them in general, they're always thought to be well just well thought of people staying until the end of the convention trying to meet as many people as possible showing up early staying late all that great stuff that just shows their worth ethic and why they became so so successful now Dana Lynn Bailey and Rob Bailey didn't just sit back and enjoy the good life they really doubled down and diversified Rob a uh, very well-known singer has a ton of albums out with many of his tracks sampled on as for sports teams and for movies. I own or I bought on iTunes a number of his albums um, and I've listened to them usually only when lifting, but they are good for lifting. Also, Dana Lynn Bailey did American Ninja Warrior. Randomly, or so it seemed, Rob Bailey 
bought a gym. Yeah, it's like, I bought a farm. No, he just literally on his YouTube channel, hey, I bought a gym today. And that's now known as the War House. Also, they decided to set up seminars for people that are interested in picking their brain and just getting out information with regards to fitness and fitness competitions and bodybuilding, stuff like that. They had massive, and I do mean massive seminars with guest speakers in their, in their Flag North Fail Warehouse, in their Warhouse Gym. They also did a ton of charity events and giveaways. Um, I, listen, I, I can't touch upon all the awesome stuff that they did. Then they went further and decided that they did not want to rep uh, someone else's supplements. They built their own supplement line, Run Everything Labs, that still exist today and still going strong. Uh, so that's just the tip of the iceberg with regards to their accomplishments and accolades. I know Dana Lynn Bailey even started a Daily Bailey workout program where you can pay per month and get daily workouts from her. Also, Rob started a podcast, right? It's just, they just continue to do so much stuff. So earlier in the week, I released a video discussing the closing of the Warhouse Gym and what that meant for local um, gyms in the area, what, what's gonna be happening with the Rona going on everywhere. And guess what? The comments were polarizing. Pros, cons, and some people hated Dana Lynn Bailey so hard. Me, I'm not one of those haters, but their argument was, that she has used anabolic steroids, she's used gear, she's used juice, she's used performance enhancing drugs. And the argument is that she claims to be natural. She claims to be natty for lack of a better term. And she's done so on camera and they feel like her claiming to be natty is a false sense of promotion for her clothing line, her supplement line, and her as a fitness icon. And I honestly just don't care. And the reason is, if you're gonna be in the fitness industry, listen, if you're gonna go, if you're gonna be a swimmer, you're gonna get wet, right? So if you're gonna be in the fitness industry, you're probably gonna be using items, stuff, prescriptions that you're not gonna find over the counter. You're not gonna find in a GNC, you know, most people aren't gonna have access to. But I'm not gonna hate on that, and I'm not gonna hate on anyone who's just not gonna come out and say it because it's kind of obvious, right? You know, you jump in a pool, you get wet. It's just kind of how it works. And I just don't think that, that, that like hate and animosity is really warranted, um, just not there. As far as the closing of the gym, a few things that came to light with regards to whether Rob owned the, the, the location, owned the physical property or rented. And here's where that is important. If you own a location, your costs, if you own your location, the costs shouldn't be as high as renting per month. Obviously, you've got that down payment, you've got all the stuff that came with it up front, but in theory, it shouldn't be that expensive going forward with respect to you're not paying rent, you're paying, you know, taxes on that. It turns out that he did not own the location, so he was paying rent. And furthermore, he recently went live on his Instagram to state, and props to him, state that he was paying too high of a rent, that he should have looked into, before he signed a five-year lease, he should have looked into the value of the property, and he was paying what he perceived to be at least three times more in rent than what other places in that area for that type of space were paying. And when he tried to renegotiate or tried to get that cost down, the, the landlord, the owner of the building was not gonna play ball. So that had left a very high, high expense. He also admitted that he went overboard with the equipment and the gear that they brought in to that gym with respect to what the money they were bringing in. At the time, they were doing all these seminars, so bringing in tons of gear and paying for all this great stuff, it kind of paid for itself. But obviously, when they moved to Montana, they moved away from doing the seminars there that reduced the cost, that it reduced the amount of money that was coming in. They also mentioned with regards to COVID, which, is, which was interesting because two things came to light. When they shut down for two months because of COVID, they still charged their members the monthly fee. My argument with that is that's not right. Personally, local gyms here, they did the right thing, at least the ones that I am aware of. They, when they closed here in Massachusetts, they told everyone their accounts were frozen. So if they had a monthly fee, they weren't gonna get charged. And if they had a yearly membership where they paid in advance, that membership was just pushed forward however many months it was gonna be closed. Um, so I don't necessarily think it was right to charge existing members for a closed gym, but that's more of a gray area. What Rob did go on to say was that a large portion of their profits for that gym, any money coming in revenue, were people that drove to the gym 
bought a guest pass and then bought a lot of the merchandise that was sold there because they were internet celebrities, right? So people were going specifically to that gym for a day or two, using that gym, buying a couple t-shirts and moseying on. So a lot of the revenue that was coming in wasn't necessarily from the monthly fees that people were paying. Also, he mentioned, and he was completely honest and props to, to Rob for saying this, that he managed poorly. He managed the people poorly when he was there. And when he left for Montana, he didn't set up the current ma ma management to have any sense of do or do not, right? Any sense of direction, any sense of manual to run the business. So when the boss is away, the kids are going to play. And that looks like what happened that the, in, from all accounts in the comments from members who had been longtime members of that gym who were, wrote really well written comments that they said that oh, for a long, long time that the gym had gone downhill, especially after Rob and Dana moved to Montana. And that makes sense if unless you manage really well or unless you are um, really good at setting up direction for the people that you're leaving in your place it's very hard to manage from far away and certainly managing from far away you're never going to be as good as when you are there every week so um, it definitely shows that rob and dana did kind of help the situation of bringing that gym down with not negotiating a better rent initially putting too much equipment in the gym and then obviously moving to montana now the argument with regards to COVID, if COVID caused the fall of the gym, and I would argue no, that the COVID was might have been the last straw, but that the house of cards was already falling because from what many people report, the lease was up and Rob had already discussed that he was not going to renew it. Members were already told that it was going to be closing. I think it's easy from the outside looking in to point the finger at Rob and Dana and say, hey, you ran the gym incorrectly. You ran it into the ground. It's all your fault. Um, and I, I, I think that's not entirely true. Rob said today that both he and Dana each kicked in 3000 a month, so 6000 total, just to keep that gym afloat. And a lot of other business owners probably might have just cut ties with the gym altogether, closed the shop up, and never opened. Also, I think it is fair to say that COVID, although it didn't help the matter, certainly wasn't the cause of the gym's downfall. And that even if COVID never happened, I got a feeling that that gym would have closed, especially where Rob and Dana have moved to Montana and moved everything else with them. Um, so I, I, I certainly would have expected that gym to close anyway, but it probably would have been under a better set of circumstances and maybe even been able to hand off the business to someone else so that there was no discontinuation of it being a gym. It seems to be easy in 2020 to simply point your finger at a business owner and blame them for everything. And that's certainly not right. We, cert we often fail to see that the fact that the business might be shut down for a long period of time, but they still have to pay employees. They still have to pay rent if they don't own the business themselves. They've still got to pay insurance. They've still got to pay all of the expenses that still show up in the mailbox, whether the business is open 24 hours a day or closed outright, regardless of whether the government forced them to shut down or not. Certainly, we fail to recognize that people have bills, whether they're a massive business owner or if they're just Joe Schmo. And I think certainly seeing successful people is an easy target. Sure, Dana Lynn Bailey, Rob Lynn Bailey, Rob Bailey, it's easy to point at them and say, oh, they sold out, they moved to Montana, they bought too many toys, this and that. But the reality is they started from nothing and they worked and worked and they worked like a rented mule on all of their businesses to make them the success that they are. They took chances that most of us wouldn't even dream of taking. And, they, when, and when it came up successful, when they rolled those dice and it came up, they won, guess what? Uh, they, 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 they made the risk and they got the reward and we really shouldn't penalize them for taking those risks and getting the rewards. And obviously when you have a number of businesses, hey, some are gonna fail. Do I think they could have done a better job with the Warhouse Gym? Sure, they probably could have managed better. That's probably without a doubt, they could have managed better. They could have been a bit more restrictive with their spending and they could have put better people in place for when they did move to Montana. But that's easy to point out after the fact 
And frankly, I think that Rob and Dana are going to continue to be successful. And I think that gyms across America are going to continue to hit hard times. They're going to close and either they're going to have to significantly raise their rates or they're going to have to reduce their costs, whether it's reduced hours or a combination of the two, reduced hours and higher rates. Who knows? But I don't think that Rob and Dana Lynn Bailey are the only gym owners that are going to find problems in 2020 and f moving forward with COVID, with home gyms being more popular than ever, and with people realizing that they don't need as much equipment as they thought to get a decent workout. If you came this far in the video, I want to know in the comments below your thoughts, because even though this video was me talking, I really get a kick and really find it very informative to get your information. Drop it in the comments below so we can have a back and forth and hopefully learn from one another. If you came this far in the video as well, make sure you hit that like button and hit that subscribe button. As usual, thanks for watching and don't save anything for the trip back.